In this video, we're going to look at formal charge, but before we do that, we should just review how to find the number of valence electrons that an element should have. And to do that, we can just go to our periodic table. And remember that elements in the same group, meaning the same vertical column, are going to have the same number of valence electrons, at least for the main groups that we're going to look at. So remember, group 1 has um, one valence electron. Group 2 has two valence electrons, B, E, M, G, C, A. I'll have two valence electrons. Skipping over the transition metals, this would be group 13 or sometimes it's also called 3A, but this would have three valence electrons. Group 14 would have four, and then five, six, seven, and the noble gases have eight, except for helium, which only has two, um, though it still has a full valence shell because only two electrons can fit in the first energy level. Your transition metals, there's actually a lot of different anomalies that happen in there. They'll usually end up having around two valence electrons, but we're not really going to look at them too much when we're looking at... Um, this chapter with bonds, also because um, with covalent bonds, because these are metals, and typically metals aren't going to form covalent bonds anyway. Um, so it's really important to be able to look at where an element lies on the periodic table and determine the number of valence electrons. Now that we know how many valence electrons each of these elements should have, we can figure out what's called formal charge, which would be the charge of the atom in the structure. Um, so if an element has more electrons around it than it should, remember electrons are negative, it's going to end up having a negative formal charge. If it has less electrons than it should, it's going to end up having a positive formal charge. And if it has as many electrons as it should have, it's going to have a zero formal charge, a formal charge of zero. So really what we're doing is we're going to our periodic table first and we're looking up the number of valence electrons each of the atoms should have. Then we're going to go to our structure and we're going to count the number of electrons that it does have in the structure. How many electrons it owns, how many is assigned to it. And every dot that you see around it would count as one electron. Every line is going to count as one electron because out of the bonds, it owns only one electron, it's sharing the other. And then we're just going to subtract these two numbers from each other. Um, so let's just kind of look at this example. These are two different possible structures for CO2. Um, and let's go atom by atom, figuring out what the formal charge is on each of these atoms in these structures. So if I look up oxygen, it's in group 16. It has six valence electrons that it should have. Okay. If I look at this structure, it does actually own six as well. It owns one, two, three, four out of these lone pairs. And then out of these bonds, it only owns one of them. Okay, it only owns one of them. So if I kind of show here, it only owns one of these bonds, the electrons in the bond. The other electron is coming from the carbon. So it owns one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is why I say when you're looking at the lines, the bonds, you're counting the bonds as one, and you're counting each dot as one. Because the lone pairs, it, don't, it only has itself, the bond, the pairs, it's sharing from the other element. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. It does have six, so it has a formal charge of zero. It doesn't have any more or less electrons than it should. Okay, moving on to the carbon. Okay, this carbon has one, one, two, three, four. Okay, it has four electrons. One, two, three, four. Each line is counting as one electron. Okay, so it should have four, according to it being in group 14. It does have four in the structure. All right, so it has a formal charge of zero. Moving on to this oxygen. Again, each line is going to count as one. Each bond, um, each, sorry, each line is going to count as one. Each dot is going to count as one. So this oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six electrons around it, and if I look up on the periodic table, it should have six, so it has a formal charge of zero. Okay, moving on to the next structure. One, two, for this oxygen, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, and it owns one from this bond. Each line counts as one. So though looking at the periodic table, it should own six, it only has, or it has seven assigned to it. So that gives it a minus one. Now if you notice here, it says what you're doing is you're doing step one, then you're doing step two, and then you're subtracting number one from two. I don't like to remember which number I'm putting first and which number I'm putting second. I just like to count, okay, let me count how many electrons. If it has more than it should, 
it will be negative that number. If it has less than it should, it will be positive that number. So oxygen should have six, but it has seven. It has one more than it should. Electrons are negative, so it has a minus one formal charge. One more electron than it should around it. Carbon has one, two, three, four around it. Um, and it should own four, one, two, three, four. So it has a formal charge of zero. This oxygen has one, two, and then each of these lines counts as one because in this bond it owns only one of them. The other is coming from the carbon. So one, two, three, four, five. It should own six. There's one less than it should, so that's a plus one formal charge. Again, if you want, you can memorize. It's the number of electrons it should have minus the ones it does have. But I like to say more around it, negative that number. Less around it, positive that number. Now what you'll notice too is that the sum of the formal charges is always going to add up to the total charge on the structure. So CO2 is a neutral molecule. You'll notice there's no charge in the top right hand corner. So all the formal charges should add up to zero. Zero, zero, zero. Add up to zero. Negative one plus zero, positive one add up to zero. So though both of these could be possible structures of CO2, we can also use formal charges to figure out what's going to be the best structure. So the best structure is to have as few formal charges as possible. So this first one would be a better structure than the second. Zero, zero, zero is better than having negative one, zero, positive one. Okay, um, so let's just take a moment and practice assigning formal charges. Um, so take a moment, pause the video, give this a try. Assign formal charge to each atom, and then, um, and then also think about would this be a good structure or not. Okay, so here, okay, each, the, let's do the phosphorus first. The phosphorus should own five according to the periodic tables in group 15, but it owns one, two, three, four. There's one less around it than it should, so it has a plus one formal charge. Uh, let's do the oxygen next. So this oxygen should own six according to the periodic table. It's in group 16, but it owns one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It owns one more than it should, so it's a minus one. And each of the chlorines look exactly the same. They should own seven according to the periodic table, and they do own seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and one from this bond is seven. So all the chlorines are zero. And sometimes you'll see in structures you can actually put the formal charge next to it. So this phosphorus has a plus one. This oxygen has a minus one, um, and a lot of times zeros you don't have to put in. But you, if you ever see a little number in a structure, that's what those represent, the formal charges. You'll notice that these all add up to zero, plus one, plus minus one, plus zeros, plus zero, plus zero, all add, add up to zero because this is a neutral structure. There is no charge on it. Okay? So again, if the atom has more electrons than it should, it will have a negative formal charge. If the atom has less electrons around it than it should, it will have a positive formal charge. You don't necessarily have to remember which number you're subtracting from the other. Less electrons around it, positive. More electrons around it, negative that number. Okay. As I said before, the best Lewis structure is going to be the one that has the fewest charges, that atoms bear the charges closest to zero. Now that might not always be possible because if you don't have a neutral molecule, if you have something that has like a minus two charge, you're never going to get all zeros because they have to add up to minus two. And that's okay, but we still want to have as low formal charges as possible. And if there is a negative charge, you want to make sure that that negative charge is on the most electronegative atom. Remember, the most electronegative atom is fluorine, the top right-hand corner, aside from their noble gases. Oxygen is the second most electronegative atom. So if you have a negative somewhere, you would want it on something like oxygen um, instead of something like carbon, let's say. Okay, so take a moment, try these. For each of these structures inside, I want you to find the formal charges of each of the atoms and then figure out which of these is the best structure. Pause the video and then check your work. So for this one, this nitrogen, if I look it up, it should have five valence electrons and it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's a minus two formal charge on that nitrogen. Right away, I can see this isn't going to be the best structure, most likely. Um, carbon has one, two, three, four. It should own four, so that's zero. Oxygen should own six and it has one, two, three, four, five. Remember, for each bond, it only counts as one because only one of those electrons is owned by oxygen. The other one will be owned by carbon. So this oxygen should have six. It has five one less than it should, so it's plus one. Minus two and plus one do add up to minus one, which is the charge on this whole structure. Um, so it's possible, but it's probably not going to be the best structure because ideally we want something like zero, zero, and a negative one to add up to negative one.
Let's look at this next one. Nitrogen should have 5. It owns 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it has one more than it should. That's a minus 1. Okay, let's look at carbon. Carbon owns 1, 2, 3, 4. It should own 4. Um, it should own 4. It does own 4. So that gives it a 0. And this oxygen owns 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It should own 6. So that's also a 0. Not minus 1, 0, 0. All add up to minus 1. So far, this is a better structure than this one to the left. And let's do this all, one all the way to the right. Nitrogen should own 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It does. So this is a 0. Carbon should own 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. It does own 4. So this is a 0. Oxygen should own 6, but it owns 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so that's a minus 1. All of these add up to minus 1. Now notice that these both have the fewest formal charges possible, 0, 0, minus 1, 0, 0, minus 1, in order to have a minus 1 overall charge. Which of these would be a better structure? So again, look at this second point. We want a negative charge, if there is one, on the most electronegative atom. Remember, electronegativity is highest in the top right-hand corner. Oxygen has a higher electronegativity than nitrogen. So we, if we have a minus 1 charge, which we have to have here, we want it on the oxygen over the nitrogen. So this is the best structure. Okay, questions? So... Um, this is a really, formal charge is a great tool to use when you're drawing structures. Um, take a moment and try this next do now. Find the formal charge of each atom in this structure and then determine the best structure for a neutral molecule formed from B and Cl. So if you get anything where the formal charges don't add up to zero, it can't be a neutral molecule. You can automatically rule it out. Take a moment, pause the video, give it a try. Okay, for this one, this boron has one, two, three, four electrons. It should own, own three, so it has one more than it should. That's a minus one charge. Each chlorine is the same. They own one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which is as many as they should. So each of these chlorines are zero. This adds up to a minus one charge overall. That's not a neutral molecule, so right away I know this cannot be the structure. This one in the middle, boron should own three valence electrons because it's in group 13. It owns one, two, three, so it has a zero. Each chlorine owns one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so each of these are zeros. This looks like a great structure, has the fewest charges possible, and it adds up to zero. This one to the right, boron should own three, but I notice it owns one more than that. It owns four, so it's minus one. This chlorine on top, it's a plus one. It should own seven, but it owns one, two, three, four, five, six. And each of these chlorines on the bottom are the same. They own one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which is as many as it should. So each of those are zero. These do all cancel out to be zero, so it could be a neutral structure. But so far, we've already seen that this middle one is a better structure because it has fewer formal charges. And this one on the bottom, boron, should have three valence electrons. It only has two that it owns, so it gives it a plus one formal charge. Each chlorine is the same. It should own seven and it does own seven so each of these are zero these add up to plus one so this could not be a neutral molecule so our best structure is this middle one that wraps up formal charge i hope you learned a lot from this lesson and i hope that you can now figure out um, use formal charge to figure out what's the best structure and use uh, and determine formal charges just period on your structure as well